Good afternoon and welcome back to Graded with Truth. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon as we continue our series, The Trauma of Better. Better is so wonderful, but there's so much trauma attached to better because it requires us to change our mindset, change certain habits, discipline ourselves in a different way. So when we see better, we have to know better. We have to get past the trauma of better in order to enter into better. And today I want to talk about a topic that many of us struggle with. I don't deserve this. And a lot of times we see better. We see the marvelous works of God. We see all that God has for us, but it's a struggle to receive it. Why? Because we think we simply just don't deserve it after all god already sent jesus he already died on the cross for us he already paid for all of our sin he already continues to bless us provide for us protect us in our everyday life but then he gives us a promise on top of that and not just a promise like a regular promise but it's attached to a birthright which means that it's something that God has preordained for us even before we were even a taught to our parents so how can we really receive this thing after all how can we really deserve this we didn't ask for it we didn't even work hard enough to be able to get it so therefore we don't deserve it but we serve a mighty god we serve a faithful god we serve a god that loves us with an everlasting love so we should not study what we deserve and what we don't deserve we should focus on the fact that god loves us we love him we are walking in his purpose, his divine will for us. And if he sees it fit to bless us, then we should receive it. There are many accounts in the Bible that speaks about people who felt like they didn't deserve what was coming their way, what was given to them, what was possible. So today, I'm just going to go through three accounts very quickly for us to understand that sometimes yes i don't deserve it yes people don't give us things for free we have to work for everything but today i want to show us that we have to get beyond that trauma to really grab hold of better all we have to do is realize that better is a gift from god just like salvation salvation is this first step of the process for us to receive from God but after that there's nothing but receiving we have to give up certain things habits attitudes the old us but none of that matters in comparison to what God will bless us with both tangible and intangible second Samuel chapter 9 verses 6 to 13 says now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul, and to all his house. Thou therefore, and thy sons and thy servants, shall till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba, 
unto the king according to all that my lord the king had commanded his servant so shall thy servant do as for mephibosheth said the king he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons and mephibosheth had a young son whose name was micah and all that dwelt in the house of ziba were servants unto mephibosheth so mephibosheth dwelt in jerusalem for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet so here this is saul's grandson jonathan's son now we know that jonathan and david had a particular kind of relationship they were close friends best friends as it were they were like brothers and because of this relationship david really did love jonathan but here we see saul who was an enemy of david his house being showed kindness because sometimes after you get the promotion you have to show kindness to your enemies so david did not ask for the son of jonathan he asked for anyone from saul's household that he would show kindness to saul wanted to kill david time and time again but yet still david looked to show the house of saul kindness why because david would not be where he was today if it had not been for saul saul took him in and valued him even when his own father didn't so even in the moments when saul would try to kill him david will not lay a finger on him david knew how to honor those that were fathers david knew how to show honor to those in power david had a particular kind of heart that was not just focused on how you treat him but he would treat you based on what god said and many of us struggle with this today so mephibosheth in this situation did not think he deserved this he responded to david by saying how can you consider a dead dog like me mephibosheth call himself a dead dog would you refer to yourself as a dead dog i think not but yet still in this moment mephibosheth is seeing himself as lord and low why because he's crippled and he's dwelling in lodeva he has servants and all these things but he's not in the place where he wants to be so david now has given to mephibosheth the one who thinks himself as nothing the one who thinks he does not deserve it the one who does not see better in his future david gives him everything that is due unto his father unto his father's household so here mephibosheth is saying i don't deserve this but david is saying it is yours and so too even though we feel like we don't deserve it god tells us it is ours why because he said it because he ordained it because he decides to give it to us and mephibosheth inherited this because of his connection to saul because he was part of saul's household but god doesn't require you to be of a certain household god just requires you to believe in him god just requires you to believe it's possible god just requires you to stand in faith with him matthew chapter 8 verses 5 to 13 says and when jesus was entered into capernaum there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying lord my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented and jesus says unto him i will come and heal him the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this man go and he goes and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he do it when jesus heard it he marveled and said to them that followed verily i say unto you i have not found so great faith no not in israel and i say unto you 
that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. So this gift that Jesus gives to us, is not just for those that born into Christianity. It's not just those that come from a certain household, but it's available to everyone that believes. Yesterday, we spoke about those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So salvation, blessings, all these things are for each and every one of us. It's not limited to those that are in a certain space or a certain church or a certain category it's available to every person that believes in the true and living god here jesus is also saying that many people will sit with abraham isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the christians if they don't believe because they are just doing this ritualistic thing will be cast into outer darkness and so jesus responded by speaking the word to heal the centurion's servant and the centurion came to jesus he didn't follow jesus all his life or anything but he was a man of status a man of authority but he was also accountable to others and others were accountable to him so he was telling jesus hey I know how this structure thing set up. I know the protocols and all these things I have to observe. But I just want you to heal my servant. And Jesus was like, okay, I come in to heal him. And he was like, no, I don't deserve you to come under my roof. But I still believe that you can heal my servant. So even though he felt like he didn't deserve it, he still had the courage to engage Jesus for the breakthrough he still had the courage to step out in faith so that god can hear him so that god can heal his household sometimes we might think we don't deserve it but if we would believe for it anyway if we would receive it anyway it would be done you don't have to have all the answers you don't have to know everything that is going to happen but all god is asking you to do is simply believe all he's asking you to do is get past the trauma of better and understand you do deserve it why do you deserve it because god said it because you are connected to god you do deserve it so get past the idea of i don't deserve it and forfeiting your destiny but instead receive everything that god has for you because you do deserve it. Luke chapter 15 verses 18 to 24 says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and the son said unto him father i have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry this is the account of the prodigal son it's a very familiar passage everyone knows of this account but the prodigal son didn't feel like he deserved to go back to the father's house and become a king become a prince he felt like okay i am going to repent and go back to my father but i can't demand these things because i already take all my inheritance and all of this but i will ask the father if he will at least hire me as a servant and the love of the father which is like the love of god towards us 
once we repent, he is not just willing to reinstate us, but he is celebrating over us. He is so glad that we decided to come back to him. He is not waiting with a ruler or a belt or a big stick to beat us because we have sinned or because we have fallen short. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But our Father, God, is just waiting to embrace us and to take us into our destiny. He is just waiting to celebrate us and to propel us into our future. He is just waiting to embrace us with open arms. And if you would get past the trauma of better and the fact that you don't deserve it, then you would realize that better is greater. Better is not because of something you did, but because of who God is. Better is not because you have worked so hard to deserve this, but you deserve it due to the word of God, due to your connection to God, due to God being your heavenly father. So today, I encourage you, Get past the trauma of better so that you can enter into your promise. Don't think that you don't deserve it because you do. Because God said it. Whether you be like Mephibosheth in a crippled stage, whether it's spiritually or physically, whether you are like the centurion who believe God, but you are not fully devoted to him as a quote-unquote Christian. Whether you are like the prodigal son and have sinned terribly and need to repent and come back on course. No matter which of these accounts you can empathize with, no matter which one of these accounts that you think applies to you, the simple fact is you have to get past the trauma of better. You have to be able to forgive yourself. You have to be able to forgive others. You have to be able to see yourself as how God sees you in order to enter into better. You don't deserve it because of how much money you make. You don't deserve it because of all the work you put in. You don't deserve it because of what you have done throughout your entire life. But you do deserve it because God said it and it is your birthright because of your connection to the kingdom of heaven so i'm saying to you today get past the trauma of better thank you so much for listening have a wonderful afternoon bye